protein, that's a pretty hot topic in the nutrition world, the supplement world, whatever, and pretty much any time I ever tell someone I'm a vegan, the first question they say is, oh my god, where do you get all your protein from? You're gonna shrivel up, your muscles, you're not gonna have any muscles anymore. Um, and that's just utter bullshit, so. Um, basically, I wanted to just show you guys uh, this book, the textbook that I had uh, for last semester for my nutrition for exercise and sport classes is 9th edition, 9th, edition, 9th edition Nutrition for Health, Fitness, and Sport by Melvin H. Williams. Uh, so, you know, it should be pretty cheap because there's newer versions out, so you, maybe you can pick one up on Amazon or something. It's a pretty good book. I recommend it. So, I'm just going to dive right in here. It says, protein is one of the best-selling sports supplements. Companies that market nutritional supplements for athletes have capitalized on this belief. Bleh, bleh, on this belief, uh, numerous high-protein products have been developed for these athletes in attempts to exploit the protein-muscle strength relationship. <coughs> Scam. <clears throat> so, basically, you know, you need protein. Everyone knows you need protein in order to build muscle. But how much protein do you need? Not that much protein. That's how much protein. Um, all right. So. The proteins ingested as animal products are generally regarded to be of a higher quality than those found in plants. This is not to say that amino acids found in plants are inferior to the same amino acid found in an animal. They are the same. So it literally just says right there very bluntly, they are the same. I think they just want to get the point across because in our society, like we've been like brainwashed to think, oh my God, you can only get protein from animals. And I mean, sure, you can get protein from plants, but it's it's inferior. Bullshit. Um, all right, animal protein is incomplete protein because it contains each essential amino acid in the proper proportion to human requirement. Plant protein can provide you with all the protein and amino acids you need for optimal growth and development. So basically. Uh, plant proteins are called incomplete proteins because even though they have all 20 amino acids, uh, some levels are higher and lower than the actual numbers that we need. So, you know, as long as you're eating enough protein, as long as you're eating enough plants, you'll get enough protein. So don't worry about it. Um, the amount of protein necessary in the diet varies in different stages of the life cycle, as may be noted in the dietary reference intakes table for macronutrients in the front inside cover. During the early years of life, children manufacture protein tissue during rapid growth stages for the rate of growth and thus the protein needs. As a person passes from in infancy to adulthood, the protein RDA per unit body weight decreases, but the absolute amount of protein needed by the body as a whole increases because of increases in body weight. So today, as a 21-year-old, I need much more protein than I did when I was a little baby. But per capita, I needed much more protein back then than I do now per capita of body weight. So, I mean, if you were to look at like a mother's breast milk, uh, about 6% of the calories coming from the breast milk is from protein. And that's when you need the most protein of your entire life. And you need 6% protein. So everyone worrying about how much protein you're going to get is, is just utter nonsense and bro science. So I'm on page 219 now if you're following along. Uh, during periods of starvation or semi-starvation, adequate amounts of dietary or endogenous carbohydrates and dietary fat may not be available. Both dietary protein and the body protein stores are used for energy purposes in such a situation. Because energy production takes precedence over tissue building and metabolism, hence if the active individual desires to maintain lean body mass, it is essential to have not only adequate protein intake, but also sufficient carbohydrate calories in the diet to provide a protein sparing effect. In other words, Carbohydrate calories will be used for energy production, thus sparing utilization of protein as an energy source and allowing it to be used for its more important structural and metabolic functions. So basically it's saying if you're starving, your body is going to break down your muscles and use the, the break down into amino acids and turn that uh, into glycogen and use that for energy. Uh, so in order to not have that happen, you need to eat enough carbohydrates. And that can actually happen a lot on ketogenic diets or even people just following super high fat diets. If you don't have enough um, if you don't have enough carbohydrates, your body is actually gonna go toward to your muscles for energy. And that's that's not good. So I'm on page two hundred and twenty one now. Uh, adequate carbohydrate intake before and during prolonged exercise will help reduce the use of body protein for this purpose. 
because the presence of adequate muscle glycogen appears to inhibit enzymes that catabolize muscle protein. High carbohydrate diets may have a protein sparing effect for endurance athletes. So eat enough carbs and your body is going to use protein only for, or practically only for, you know, tissue repair and building. And it's not going to use it quite so much for energy purposes. Uh, so I'm on page 222 now, protein metabolism may also become more efficient as a result of training. Although an initial bout of exercise may markedly avail, elevate protein breakdown and synthesis in an untrained individual, the effect would be much less in one who has trained habitually. So basically, if you uh, train often, your body's going to be better at using protein. So essentially, you're not going to need as much if you have been training versus someone who does the same exact workout who hasn't been training. They're actually going to need more protein than you because their body's not quite as efficient at using protein. Uh, so the more you work out, the better your body is at using protein. End of story. Conversely, in, I'm on page 223 now. Uh, conversely, in its recent dietary reference intakes for protein, the National Academy of Sciences concluded that in view of the lack of compelling evidence to the contrary, no additional dietary protein is suggested for healthy adults undertaking resistance training or endurance exercise. Some investigators have even contend that because exercise training increases the ability of the body to retain protein in the recovery period, athletes in training may need less protein than sedentary individuals if they consume enough calories to maintain body weight. What did I just say? It says it right there. All right, next, also on page 223. Uh, other than water, protein is the main component of muscle tissue, so strength-trained individuals have valued dietary protein as a key nutrient for centuries as a means of maximizing muscle protein synthesis. Unfortunately, there is very little scientific information about the specific protein requirements for the development of lean muscle mass in weight training programs. So basically, there's not that many studies if any, that show that increasing your protein intake will really result in increased muscle mass. If you want to get swole, lift heavy weights. That's it. And eat enough calories and you'll be fine. Actually, they talk about this a little bit right here. Um, in addition to, on page 224, in addition to protein, Gail Butterfield recommends strength trained athletes attempting to increase muscle mass also consume additional energy about 200 more calories per day carbohydrate is a recommended energy source as the insulin effect of carbohydrate is also anabolic so two things using carbohydrates that'll you know push up your insulin which is actually good because it's an anabolic hormone it's good for uh building muscle and also you need to be in a caloric surplus in order to build muscle at least 200 calories you know if you can do more that's cool too um but yeah, carbohydrates are recommended for that because you're going to use carbohydrates. That's your energy that you're going to be using. So, you know, might as well carb up. Uh, the Academy has criticized the available studies and concluded the available data do not support the conclusion that the protein requirement for resistance training individuals is greater than that of non-exercising subjects. So if you guys are beginning to see a pattern, that's good. Uh, Still on page 224, it is important to reinforce the viewpoint that carbohydrate is the main energy source for endurance type athletes. Besides its efficiency as a metabolic fuel during exercise, carbohydrate also provides a potent protein sparing effect. That's, if you guys haven't noticed that, I've been saying that a lot. That's, maybe you should notice that now. <laughs> uh, consuming sufficient carbohydrate will decrease reliance on protein during aerobic endurance exercise, reduce the formation of ammonia, and better maintain normal protein status in the body. So if you want your protein to work, eat enough carbs. So I'm on page 226 now. Uh, it says the carbohydrate alone may have some effect on protein synthesis following exercise as it may help to decrease secretions of cortisol, a hormone that promotes protein catabolism. Moreover, Lemon has noted that the insulin response to dietary carbohydrate has been shown to enhance the already elevated protein synthetic rate in muscle following a strength training session. However, Van Loon indicated that if adequate protein is available, there is no need for carbohydrate to promote muscle protein synthesis, but also noted resist since resistance exercise uses muscle glycogen, the carbohydrate could help replenish muscle glycogen. So basically, you know, you got to carb up before so you have enough glycogen 
to do the lifting, you got to carb up afterwards in order to make sure that you recover efficiently. Whey proteins are extracted from the liquid whey that is produced during the manufactured cheese or casein. So basically, it is a waste product, if you haven't figured that out. Uh, we're on page 228 now in here. Um, colostrum or bovine colostrum is the first milk secreted by cows. Standardized preparations of colostrum are available as dietary supplements. It's who who needs that? Who who has a colostrum deficiency? Nobody has a colostrum deficiency. Um, you don't need colostrum. It's it's for cows. Like the people, it's just thinking that people need to drink cow's milk is absolutely absurd. In nature, you know, only species uh, species only drink milk of their own species, and they also only do it when they're babies. So why a grown man or woman would drink milk it really makes no sense other than it's been just ingrained in our society to do it all right here's another thing on uh, supplements spirulina and brewer's yeast are good sources of protein and a variety of vitamins and minerals but convey no magical ergogenic qualities because i see spirulina all the time as a supplement and it basically says right here there are no magical ergogenic qualities so don't don't buy into the bullshit just eat you know whole like fruits and vegetables, whole plants. Um, page 229 now. Neither of these two studies reported a significant effect of the high protein intake on measures of strength. In a review, Garlic and others noted an absence of strong evidence that high protein diets confer any advantage in terms of strength. More recent research also indicated protein supplementation does not appear to increase muscular strength. So like I said, if you want to build muscle, just lift heavy weights, and that's pretty much, that's that's it, that was page 229. So, I hope you guys saw a couple patterns in this chapter, and I hope that you got over your uh, low protein phobia, because you really don't need that much protein. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you later.